Good afternoon, everyone. Doug Simonian over at New York Metro Weather with your latest video discussion. We will be talking about the upcoming major winter storm with potential blizzard conditions at times, starting for late tonight and going into tomorrow. We'll talk about the evolution of the storm and a little bit of an explanation as to why the snow is going to be so heavy, why it also will end pretty quickly, and the general uh, impacts and hazards to go along with it. So this is a little bit technical, but I'll try not to be overbearing with it. This is today's uh, GFS model, the American Global Model, um, in the middle of the atmosphere, showing the general ridges and troughs in the atmosphere, and the colors are what we call vorticity, or spin, counterclockwise spin in the atmosphere. And when you get these pieces of energy or pieces of vorticity and these mini troughs, what we call phasing or coming together, that tends to lead to um, major storm development, especially along and east of this trough in the atmosphere. So we have three pieces of energy. One is actually a little bit of a piece from the polar vortex, actually, um, bending into the um, northern Great Lakes. And the, the main piece of energy in the Tennessee Valley and Arklatex, and also some embedded energy in the Gulf of Mexico with a subtropical jet leading to a lot of moisture influx. So as we head through time from you know, this afternoon into this evening and tonight, notice how the pieces of energy all come together, um, not completely come together, but they come together somewhat right along the east coast and send all of this energy right up the coast, um, which is a classic evolution for a major winter storm for the region. So the reason why the forecast is a little bit tricky is because there is still a pretty big divergence in some of the forecast models. Um, but just to go, just to show you the potential with this storm, this is the actually today's Canadian model. Um, this is valid for um, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, the six hour precip between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. There is a lot of heavy snow across pretty much the entire region in that period. So before the morning commute, there could already be 6 to 10 inches of snow or even locally higher amounts in some spots just because of the ridiculously heavy snow rates we could get. Um, and so there's light snow that has overspread the region by 2 a.m. and then the heavy snow um, between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. and then more heavier snow after um, 8 a.m. into the early afternoon, but then the coastal areas could actually change over to rain briefly, but inland is still getting slammed. And then after that, the storm pretty much wraps up. But talking about the, the model differences, here's a Canadian vowed for 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning with the, low, the surface low track just off the coast. But that sometimes can lead to some warm air uh, trying to get into the system. Here's the higher resolution Canadian model, which is actually even further west with the surface low inland over Delaware, which eventually would lead to some warmer air getting brought into the system, though it does still snow very heavily before the warm air gets to the coastal areas, which is why even the coastal areas change over to rain and sleet, they can still get in excess of 10 inches of snow, whereas areas that stay all snow could actually get some amounts that are over 18 inches. But notice how in this model, uh, decent portions of Long Island change over to rain in the afternoon. and um, New York City and parts of New Jersey change over to sleet, which cuts down on the heavy snowfall amounts somewhat, but the fact that the snow is so heavy before that still means um, potential major impacts. And this is the NAM model valid for 8 a.m., also showing the low pressure very close to the coast. Um, and then even a little bit of warmer air being brought into the area initially, and then some sleet mixing in. Uh, into parts of Long Island and New York City with heavy snow still over New Jersey. But as a storm intensifies and brings more lift in the atmosphere, you actually cool off again and change back to snow. So the dynamics associated with the storm could uh, lead to snow lasting a little bit longer despite the fact that the temperatures will be trying to warm up. But either way, most of the precipitation wraps up um, by the afternoon hours. But then if you look at actually the, um, the GFS model valid for 7 a.m., it's, it's a little bit further offshore. 
and also if we go towards uh, the afternoon it stays a little bit further offshore if this were to be right uh, most of Long Island except for maybe eastern Suffolk would stay all snow and get and get the 18 inch plus amounts that inland areas will get while this is a possibility I tend to think the GFS is a little bit too cold and a little bit too far southeast so the highest amounts will probably be you know northwest of New York City into northeast Pennsylvania southeast New York and, uh, and into Connecticut but the coastal areas will still get good snow before the changeover um, but southeastern New Jersey it's looking more and more like a warmer event with less snow than previously anticipated as far as why the snow rates could be so heavy here's a surface evolution of a higher resolution NAM model look at all this uh, all these this thunderstorm complexes in the Gulf of Mexico that are being fed into the storm so that leads to a plethora of moisture being able to gather itself and remember all the energy shaking up the coast at in the middle of the atmosphere also leads to an intensification of heavy precipitation and high pressure to the north lead to initially cold air despite the storm tracking so close to the coast and look how heavy the snow in this model is this this pink isn't actually sleep mix this is just interpreting very heavy snow with snowfall rates potentially between two and five inches per hour in in the um anywhere between let's say 4 a.m and 9 a.m for most of the area and then maybe by um, 10, 11 a.m., the, the coast will begin to change to uh, rain or sleet, and then um, maybe a little bit later than that in New York City. But this run, it's so dynamic with the storm that the cold air gets brought back into the, the system, and we change back over to snow anyway. Another reason why this storm has so much potential for very heavy precipitation is there's a very strong temperature gradient. These are the temperatures at 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere and the lines are the actual um, temperatures so notice how tight these lines are together that, that means there's a very strong gradient and storms tend to love these temperature gradients as far as generating heavy snow so that gradient very much pushes into the area um, very late in the overnight and early tomorrow morning which leads to extremely heavy snowfall amounts. And look at the dynamic cooling that in the atmosphere. Initially, the temperatures warm up at 5,000 feet, but then as the storm intensifies and gets closer to us, cold air gets brought back into the system, which further complicates the forecast because, you know, some areas, they may change the sleet for a little bit, but if this is right, then we go back to snow even. So certainly an interesting forecast. Another reason why the snow can be so heavy is because of this is the this is the jet stream we have a very strong subtropical jet stream in uh, from the uh, Gulf of Mexico which feeds a lot of moisture into the atmosphere and then another very strong jet stream in northern New England so we are in between these two jet streams which is also a classic recipe for heavy snow um, also another indicator is this is the the jet stream at the lower levels of the atmosphere at 5,000 feet a very strong jet incoming from the Atlantic, which further provides a lot of moisture for lift and precipitation. Here's This is going to be a little bit more technical, so bear with me here, but this is a forecast sounding for New York City, valid for 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning. This is on the GFS model, which is a little, a little bit colder than some of the other forecast guidance, but it's still a good um, guideline. So the lower parts of the atmosphere are on the bottom, the middle of the atmosphere is in the middle, and the upper parts of the atmosphere are above and these are the winds as you increase with height and the red the red line is temperature and the green line is dew point so when they are on top of each other that means the atmosphere is completely saturated and that's what it is here a very saturated atmosphere which means there's a lot of moisture for precipitation and also with the temperatures the further to the left the temperatures are the colder it is and the further to the right the temperatures are, the warmer it is. So if we notice here in the middle of the atmosphere, there's a little bit of a trough of warmth um, above the at, um, in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And this trough of warmth is actually a classic signal for heavy snow as well, as it tightens the temperature gradient and leads to more unstable air above it, which we'll show here. Whenever the temperature line bends very steeply negative, that means the atmosphere is very unstable and the reason why it bends negative 
is because of this trough of warm air that gets pushed into the system in the middle of the atmosphere. So that leads to a lot of instability, which leads to additional lift for very heavy precipitation. So this is one reason why the snowfall amounts could be from two to five inches per hour. But remember, the storm is going to be moving pretty quickly and drying out. This is the forecast sounding for 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Look how dry it is in the middle of the atmosphere. You're not going to be producing any more precipitation with that. Maybe some light drizzle, light sleet, um, maybe a little bit of light snow. But this goes to show that the storm, as far as the heavy precipitation, will generally end um, at uh, by noon or a little bit after noon. So because of this, here is our a new snowfall map. We push the higher amounts a little bit further northwest. We may actually have to cut back a little bit further in eastern Long Island. I could see the amounts maybe being more in the uh, 6 to 10 inch range in eastern Suffolk. Though northwest Suffolk could still definitely get the 12 to 15. Most of Nassau, 12 to 15, and then maybe 15 to 18 from New York City and westward. This 18 inch plus possible doesn't mean that everyone is in this area will get 18 inches or more, but it is possible that they can get an excess of 18. But so in general, 15 to 18 inches with locally higher amounts is certainly in play. And then as you get further south and east along the coast of New Jersey, the low track is just simply too close to the coast for truly warm air, or for truly cold air, I should say, and thus the snowfall amounts get lowered. So just remember, um, it is very important to be prepared, especially considering there's also going to be high winds with the storm, with wind gusts between 40 and even 55 miles per hour at times, which could lead to power outages. So it's important to have some flashlights with you and other essentials such as you know batteries, make sure you have gas in your car and charge your charge your phones and such. So of course just make sure to stay tuned and we'll keep you updated with any additional changes that the storm will be making. Alright, so have a great afternoon. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.